Hi everyone, this is Maverick Pod, the Chemistry Guru. Now sometimes when we do redox questions, we will encounter situations where they give us experimental data and we can determine the number of mole of the reactants. But interestingly, we actually don't really know the redox reaction because there's one species which is unknown. So usually questions will say that I have a particular species which undergoes oxidation or reduction and we want to determine the oxidation state of the product of this species. Or sometimes they'll give us a few possible products and we want to determine which is a reasonable product. So what we want to do in this video is to go through an example involving this type of question and we want to learn how to determine the oxidation state of an unknown species from experimental data. Alright, so let's look at this example. I have this question here, sodium thiosulfate. It is used in the textile industry to remove an excess of chlorine from bleaching processes by reducing it to chloride ions. So Based on this information, we know that this is the reaction between thiosulfate and chlorine. Chlorine, it will be reduced to chloride. But now the issue is, we know that thiosulfate, it will undergo oxidation because chlorine undergoes reduction to chloride. But we don't know what thiosulfate will be oxidized to. So which is precisely what we want to determine in this exercise. I have 20 cm cube of 0.10 mole per dm cube of sodium thiosulfate requires 192 cm cube of chlorine for complete reaction at room temperature and pressure. So this is a uh, chlorine in the gaseous state. This is the volume and concentration of sodium thiosulfate. In this reaction, which of the following is a possible formula of sulfur containing product? So we are given four different possibilities. A, it is HSO4 minus. B, it is SO2. C, it is sulfur element. D, it is hydrogen sulfide. So actually these four options what is different? It is the oxidation state for sulfur. So basically what we will need to do, you notice, is we need to determine the final oxidation state of sulfur. And from there we can deduce which of these options it is a reasonable answer. So in general, there are four steps to work towards determining the oxidation state of this unknown. So let us take a look at these four steps. Alright, so I think this is a useful guide for this type of question. If I want to determine the oxidation state of an unknown species from experimental data, then my suggestion is we make use of these four steps. Step number one, I determine the number of mole of reactants. Both reactants that are oxidized and reduced, the number of mole can be determined because the unknown in this question, it is actually the oxidation state of one of these species. It is actually not the number of mole. So questions will give us this information. We will be able to determine the number of mole of both reactants. The second step from the known half equation, I want to determine the number of mole of electron transferred. In my opinion, actually this second step, it is the most important step. And it actually makes use of a very fundamental concept in redox reactions, which we will talk about as we go along. Then step three, what we want to do is we determine the number of mole of electron to the number of mole of unknown species. Then finally, from this mole ratio, we can actually determine the change in oxidation state of the unknown. And from there, I can determine the oxidation state of this unknown. Of course, just talking about these four steps, maybe we don't really know what's going on, right? So let us try to apply these four steps to this particular question. Okay, let's run through this part by part. Step number one, I want to determine the number of mole of reactants. Now this is fairly straightforward because the number of mole of sodium thiosulfate it is given. You have the concentration, you have the volume. So mole of thiosulfate would just be volume 20 divided by 1000 times concentration 0 0.10. Number of mole of thiosulfate will be 2 times 10 to the power of minus 3. Then chlorine gas given at room temperature and pressure. I have the volume 192 cm cube. I convert this to dm cube times 10 to the power of minus 3 divided by the molar volume of a gas at RTP, which is 24.0 dm cube. So the number of mole I can get will be 8 times 10 to the power of minus 3. So this is step number one, which is fairly straightforward. Now step number two, it is the most important step because I want to make use of the known half equation. I want to determine the number of mole of electron transferred during this redox reaction. So what do we mean? Because we have two half equations, right? I know in this case, chlorine, it is reduced to chloride. So therefore this half equation, I can actually write this out. This reduction will be Cl2 plus two electron to give me two Cl minus. Now this half equation is known because I know the reactant is Cl2. I know the product is Cl minus. I can balance this half equation. I know exactly what is the reactant and the product. I know exactly how many electrons 
is involved in this half equation. So this is the known half equation. In this case, the reduction half equation is known. Now, if chlorine undergoes reduction, then thiosulfate must undergo oxidation. If it undergoes oxidation, I know that it is the loss of electron. But now the problem is I actually don't really know how many electrons are involved here because I don't know what is the final oxidation state of sulfur. So the product that is containing sulfur, actually it is an unknown term. So I just put a question mark here. And the number of more of electron, it is also an unknown because I don't know what is the oxidation state for this guy. So therefore I cannot balance this half equation. So the oxidation half equation involving thiosulfate, it is unknown. So this is the one that we don't know. So what we do is we use the known half equation, which is the reduction half equation in this case. I go and determine the number of mole of electron transfer. So from the known half equation, what we have is electron to Cl2 is 2 is to 1. So which is here, right? Electron gain, because it is a reduction, reduction, it is a gain of electrons. Electron gain to Cl2, it is 2 is to 1. So therefore, I can find the number of mole of electron that is transferred in the process. The mole of electron gained by Cl2 will just be 2 times the number of mole of Cl2 which we have previously determined 8 times 10 to the power of minus 3. So this will give me 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 2. Now why is this important is the number of mole of electron gain by Cl2 is equal to the number of mole of electron lost by thiosulfate. So how do we know this is the case is because this is a redox reaction. A redox it is the transfer of electron. The species that is oxidized will lose a certain amount of electron. The species that is reduced will gain 100% of this electron. So the transfer of electron, it is a total transfer. There's no remainder. Actually, when we balance the redox reaction using the half equation method, intuitively, actually, we are aware of that. It's just that maybe we don't know it explicitly. When we balance the two half equations, when you have the reduction half equation and the oxidation half equation, how do we add the two half equations together? We modify the two half equations such that the number of mole of electron for both half equations are the same, correct? Then when we add the two half equations together, then the electrons will cancel out. Then the overall redox reaction will not have any electrons involved. So why do we do that? It's because the transfer of electron is 100%. The species that undergoes oxidation will lose a certain amount of electron. The species that undergoes reduction will gain the same number of mole of electron. So when we balance the redox equation, actually we are applying that idea. Maybe we are not aware of it. So what this means is the number of mole of electron gained by Cl2 in this reduction. Actually, where does all these electrons come from? The electrons actually come from this oxidation. So I know that the number of mole of electron loss by thiosulfate will also be this value 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 2. Alright, once we have that, then we can move on to the third step, which is finding the mole ratio between electron to the reactant. So the number of mole of electron loss to the number of mole of thiosulfate will be 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 2 divided by the mole of thiosulfate 2 times 10 to the power of minus 3. This will give me 8 divided by 1. So the mole ratio involving electron loss to thiosulfate, it is 8 divided by 1. Alright, finally, step number 4, we can determine the oxidation state of the unknown. Actually, from the mole ratio, we can roughly figure out, right? Because the mole ratio of electron loss to thiosulfate, it is 8 divided by 1. In statement form, it means that each thiosulfate will lose a total of 8 electrons. Now, this one is interesting because what we will have to do is we will have to actually take into account the number of sulfur in thiosulfate. Because you notice in 1, S2O3, 2 minus, actually there are two sulfurs. So both of these sulfur in total lose 8 electrons. So therefore, we will need to figure out how many electrons each sulfur would lose. So because each S2O3, 2 minus loses 8 electrons, and inside each type of sulfate, we have actually two sulfur. So therefore, each sulfur will only lose half of it, four electrons. One sulfur lose four, then two sulfur in type of sulfate lose a total of eight electrons. So basically, each sulfur will lose four electrons. And in this case, if it loses electrons, we know that it undergoes oxidation and the oxidation state of sulfur will actually increase by four units. Now, what we will have to do next is we will have to determine the original oxidation state of sulfur in thiosulfate, 
then we increase this oxidation state by 4 units. So intel sulfate S2O3 2 minus oxidation state for sulfur it is a plus 2. So therefore inside this product, whatever version this guy is, the oxidation state of that sulfur must be a plus 6. Because as already mentioned, if it is originally plus 2 oxidation state, the oxidation state for this guy will increase by 4 units, plus 2, then plus 4 units. So therefore the oxidation state of sulfur in the product would be a plus 6. So finally, we can go back to the question and we look through the options, we see which of these options have the oxidation state of sulfur being a plus 6. So if I run through this guy, option A, H, S, O, 4 minus oxidation state for sulfur, it is a plus 6. S, O, 2, sulfur, oxidation state, it is a plus 4. Sulfur element, of course, oxidation state, it is 0. H, 2, S, oxidation state for sulfur, it is a minus 2. So as mentioned, we already know the oxidation state for sulfur in the product should be a plus 6 oxidation state. So therefore, out of these four options, A has to be the answer. Alright, so that was the discussion involving determining oxidation state of an unknown species using experimental data. So if you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.